The last of the knees and deck framing around the cockpit and aft hatch are all finished. While the last coat of varnish was drying on those, Steve got started on the block for the mizzen mast. All right, I'm gonna work on the rough side here because the, the other side is flat and smooth. So I want that to run on the bandsaw table when we go and cut the edges nice and neat so that we don't have that wobbling that I had before because it's got some cupping to it. It's gonna go into the decking and we're gonna leave it just a little bit proud and it's gonna get fared in when we fare in the rest of the deck. Just good enough. The mast is going to end up getting a big hole cut in the middle of this. And we'll put a through bolt on either side. And then the decking will go on, and the decking will get screwed down into it. So this won't go anywhere once it's in there, that's for sure. Uh, I'm going to take it downstairs to the bandsaw and just nip these edges. Uh, and I'll probably cut just like a tiny little bit wide of them and throw it on the joiner and clean that up and see if we can get it to and vessel down in there. Before I can install this, I've got to cut that other deck beam and get that ready to kind of fit into the end of this. Um, but we'll get this kind of cut down and ready to go and one problem at a time. Meanwhile, Alex has been finishing up work on the sill plates by making half lap joints for the corners. Those are all the pieces for the aft deck here. Uh, I'm gonna go collect a few tools. You gotta get the drill and some screws and some bolts and whatnot. And uh, we'll get these installed and then I get to work on the, uh, the mizzen blocking there. Once the mizzen blocking's in, that will almost completely finish the deck structure from the forward hatch aft. We have a little bit of blocking to do in the very, very stern, but that won't go on until probably the shear streaks go on. And then there's two full-size deck beams up forward, but we're not gonna do those for quite a while either. Uh, those are up in the forepeak, and it's really nice having the standing headroom. And back here, you can stand in the hole for the cockpit, and you can stand in the house, and you can stand in the forehatch, so 
leaving those couple beams out will make working up in the four peak really nice and there won't be much in the boat where you won't really be able to stand up. We'll close that in before we do the deck at some point down the road. Uh, but she's looking good. It's really, it's really awesome to see the whole deck structure going in and even just seeing the, the short beams go in and fill in along the, uh, the house and the cockpit just makes, visually, just makes such a big difference. It looks so much closer to complete. Uh, still a long way to go, but we're getting there. We have an FTH. fastening the ends first because um, as you tighten the screw you snug that joint up a little bit and what I don't want to do is tighten this end and then screw these and either put like a bow or a cup into it um, which with these big timbers is semi unlikely um, but it just eliminates that risk so put it in there drill it blow out any of the sawdust from the drilling then put a screw and then I've been putting 1 3 8 bolt down through the shelf. And in this case, because it butts up against the knee, I'm gonna put in a big bronze screw sideways into the knee uh, just to add a little bit more security. So I got one bolt, two bolts, and a screw. And we're done back here. One of the perks of Arabella being a new construction is that if we change and deviate from the plans, we're not like destroying a piece of history. So the plans are a great guide and we followed them for the vast majority of the build. There's a few things that we're doing a little bit different. And one of those is back here where the mizzen mast and the cockpit are. 
So Atkin had this huge cockpit drawn in that was basically the whole width of the boat and it had fuel tanks underneath seats that were in the cockpit. And the mizzen mast came through here through the bridge deck and the bottom of it landed on this huge beam that ran the full length underneath the cockpit. So it went all the way to the stern and was supported up by the engine. Um, so that's what carried that mizzen mast and you had this huge cockpit. Now the motor, the engine that they had in that boat in 1934 is a heck of a lot bigger than the diesel that we're putting inside the Arabella. Motors have gotten a lot smaller. So ours sits much farther aft than what they have drawn in the plans. It sits so far aft that it's actually aft of where the mizzen mast were to go through if we brought it all the way down to the keel. So we built the decking here and we're kind of thinking that it was going to end, end up being deck step, much like Atkin has drawn and then we realized how far back the diesel went and it probably makes more sense to keel step the mast. It's a lot stronger if you keel step it uh, and we have the availability. It shouldn't really cause any issues with the engine. Uh, so that means you got to do the blocking here, not as if it's going to support a mast on top of it, but that it's going to have a mast going through it. And that mast needs to go right through this center deck beam here. So I've got to support this four deck beam that is the house and this aft one that is the cockpit and they've got to get attached to this one because this one's got a big old hole cut in the middle of it. Uh, my initial thought was to do that at one big timber much like I did up forward uh, but I realized that it would actually be a lot simpler just to put a timber in either side here put a couple bolts on either side and then when we cut the hole for the mast we'll just cut right through the middle of the deck beam. Uh, so I think that that is a much easier, simpler solution than what I originally had thought. So I'm going to get cranking on that. Uh, and the cockpit obviously is uh, a bit smaller. Actually, it's the same size as what Ekin had drawn because he had the fuel tanks underneath seats, which essentially blocked out that part of the cockpit anyways. Uh, but we're going with a much more traditional cockpit and one that like Victoria had where it just drops in. Uh, so we're going to build that at a later date so it's not in the way, uh, but that'll just kind of basically be a bathtub that sits down in here and sits on all of the deck beams. Um, so yeah, a little bit different than what Akin had drawn, but it's actually uh, a bit more traditional this way. I've looked at a lot of boat plans and I've never seen plans that had the mizzen mast and the cockpit the way Akin has it drawn. Uh, and when Thad was here, he said the same thing. And Thad has looked at a lot of boat plans. Um, so even though we're breaking with the plans, we're actually staying a little more with tradition. All right, so I got the first part of the half lap cut on the fore and aft sill plate. And now I need to figure out the second part of the half lap. So this big piece is what's going to be sitting here. So it's going to be sitting right there and they need to overlap. And then we're basically going to fare that out. This one is a little thick at the moment. I've got a line drawn to show where the two and a quarter is. So we're going to uh, figure that out afterwards. But right now I'm going to cut this a little shorter, leave that end long so that I can work on that afterwards. And I think the plan is to come right off of here and measure up on this side, measure up on this side, make sure they're the same because they should be. And then uh, make sure that this is square through here, which I just did that, so that should be as well. And then uh, just mark it on this beam right here. So I think I'm going to get to cutting that right now. It's, it's a little cold today. We're working a little slower. <laughs> My hands are definitely hurting. Steve does much, much better in this weather than I do. I mean, him and Robin went canoeing in the middle of December. That would not be my jam. <laughs> Before we do anything, I'm gonna mark this beam so that I know which direction it goes. So this is starboard.
The end of the day yesterday, I got these two blocks pushed in here. Uh, this is where we're gonna cut the hole for the mizzen mast. Now, since the deck beams are curved and these timbers are straight, we've got a pretty good gap. Oh, let's say almost three eighths of an inch here um, between the top of this blocking and the center of our deck beam. And we wanna make sure that all of this blocking is flush with the top of the decking, deck beams so that when we put the decking on, it doesn't float this. We don't want the decking going on here and having this weird gap that we can never access and where moisture can hang out. So what I'm gonna do is take these wedges and I have this two by four clamped underneath to support them. And I'm gonna tap the wedges in there and I'm gonna lift these center blocks up just enough so that the center of the block is flush and we're gonna end up sticking up on either end. Uh, and then we can drill it, we can bolt it, and when that's all done, we can kind of just fair it out uh, and the block will be flush with the top of the deck beams uh, and it won't be quite flush on the bottom on the inside, but that really doesn't matter at all. Um, so yeah, climb in the boat and tap some wedges. So that's exactly what I was trying to accomplish. We went from it being below the center to just a little bit above, uh, which I'd rather have a little more up here to play with. And we're, I don't know, half an inch shy down here. So we're still gonna end up with a two inch thick timber at the very ends. And we're gonna have a full two and a half inch thick timber in the middle, which is plenty thick. Uh, so next up, we gotta go grab the drills and mark out really well here where the hole for the mast is gonna go so that I don't accidentally put a bolt too close to that. And we gotta tap up this one. And uh, then when Alex gets here, I'll be out of his way and he can finish up the sills here. This should be about the center of our mast. And our mast is six inches. So three. All right, so that's the diameter of the mast, the mizzen mast back here. But we obviously don't want a hole that is exactly the diameter of the mast because we would never be able to really get it in and out of there. So let's add a couple inches to that. If the mizzen mast hole will be quite that big, um, but that kind of gives you the idea. So you end up cutting an oversized hole, the mast goes in, and then you fit wedges that go around it and lock it in place. And that way, when you have the crane and you pick up your mast, you know, you got this kind of bigger hole that you can guide it into. And the wedges also will let you adjust the rake. So you can kind of play with the mast a little bit by adjusting how thick these wedges are and how you move it in the hole a little bit. And we can see this knot here, which is pretty ugly, um, but with a little bit of careful placement, that is totally gonna disappear when we cut. Now this gives us where we can put our bolts 
And if we, if this isn't quite where it needs to be, it's gonna move forward or it's gonna move aft along the center line. The mast here is not gonna move port to starboard. So we can put the bolts pretty close to this and know that we're gonna be outside of it and that we're gonna be safe. Uh, because like I said, it's just gonna move fore or aft and that won't affect the bolts at all. So I'm gonna go grab the, the drills or uh, the drill and the drill bits, and we got a couple bolts put in here. All right, so that's the fourth hole, and those should be through this doubled up deck beam, through this block, and into this one. So now I'm going to take this block out because it's drilled, and I don't really need the resistance and need to be pulling chips that far, and I'll drill through the last little bit. So now that we have the joints cut on the forward end and they're fitting really nicely, I really like those. Um, moving on to the aft end right now. Steve's been working on putting some uh, blocking in here for the mizzen mast. The mizzen mast is gonna get stepped on keel, which is not according to plans, but we're pretty excited about that. It's a lot more uh, robust um, than having it deck stepped. Um, so the next steps for me over here, I uh, let these sit overnight to try to get them to take form a little bit more because they're a little bit wonky. Um, they fit really well, they're mated well, but um, as they dried, they kind of uh, have a little twist in them. But it's okay because they're gonna get screwed down and they're not gonna move afterwards. But it just makes it a little bit funkier trying to figure out how to cut these joints. So I've obviously got these cut already. This is the piece that's gonna lay in here. Um, and it needs to sit underneath. So I need to take measurements um, to cut these laps right here. But before I do that, I've got these in place and I wanna see how they're hitting. Take a couple measurements over here. Um, there's a little bit of a difference in angle over here because this um, uh, deck beam was a little bit lower just in that corner. But just try to get all those little points figured out before I actually start cutting anything. Next week, with work on the sills finished, Steve and Alex will put together a mock-up of the housetop. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing to the channel, and hope to have you back again next week.